Um, we go on to a question from Leslie Sermon, please. Leslie Sermon. Following the death last night of David Askew, is it now time to impose much stronger penalties for these neighbourhood bullies? This was the, the death that's been uh, in all the news today of a 64-year-old, I think, man who died having spent 20 years being um, allegedly having been teased and mocked by young people in the neighbourhood. Kelvin McKenzie. Do you know what I most object to about this? When, when people refer to it as antisocial behaviour. What this is, is thuggery. Why don't we just call it... And they, and they carried out thuggery. They carried out... <laughs> that, they, that they carried out harassment. That they carried out vileness. So some civil servant, some council bureaucrat has invented a word taking all the violence out of what the victim suffers. It's part of, it's part of the Jamie Bolger thing, and now this man is now dead. Did you know that uh, something like, and, and, and in some senses I blame, I do genuinely blame the police in this area. Because I believe that the police have got too used to sitting, driving round fast after people and this, that and the other, and have lost entire communities who basically are terrorised by these revolting thugs that are often going round quite deprived areas of Britain where there's a tyranny in the air. And nobody's saying, oh, they're being antisocial to Auntie Joan again. They're saying, Auntie Joan can't even come out of her house. This man's death is a wake-up, is a final wake-up call. And I hope that there are some of, some of this last gasp of a cabinet we've got, this last gasp of Drax Straw, this last gasp of all these rather strange Home Secretaries who come and go within this Labour administration, who finally say, this man's death is going to be the end of it, and we're never, ever going to refer to it as ASBOs or anti-social orders again. <laughs> Joe Swinson. Well, I think, first of all, there is a problem with the way police have been dealing with it, and we need to have more police, but crucially, actually, we need more police out there rather than in the police station, out there with better technology and kits so they don't have to go back to the police station and spend three hours filling in a couple of, of, of forms to deal with whatever instance it is that they can you know, do it on their Blackberry and move on to the next thing. We need to free up police time to be actually out there visibly policing. But I think the other thing about these cases, and it, if, sadly there is, a, there is a catalogue of these cases now that we can look at, it's not one instance that some one thing has happened. It's that behaviour has progressively got worse and worse, often with individuals being targeted through a campaign of, of terror, effectively. And it just grinds people down. But what should the police do about it? Well, I think I mean, actually, there's a report out today, as you know, by the Chief Inspector of Constabulary, saying that nearly a quarter of reported what you wouldn't call antisocial behaviour, but thuggery, whatever it is, are not even visited by the police, exactly. that, that a quarter and of those events, they don't even go to them. And it lets it get out of hand. They've actually got to act as soon as that kind mm. of behaviour starts. So rather than seeing it just as antisocial And behavior, arrest and charge crime. people, do you mean, straight well, away? Yes, but it may not always be that that is the best thing to do. If it is the first time that some young folk have been out doing graffiti, maybe there has been some very good examples of neighbourhood justice panels where you get those young people before they've gone all the way down that route of being thugs, and you put them face to face with a folk who's all they've graffitied and you work out a community <laughs> sentence to deal with them before you let them go down the road of ending up throwing rocks at people's windows. So get in there early, it actually will be cheaper to do that rather than letting them become fully fledged, um, you know, horrors to the community. And, and you on the right here. I'm here listening to how we need more police, we need more soldiers, we're in the middle of a recession. How realistic is this? Uh, Justin Greening. Well, one of the things we can do is stop having police filling in mindless forms for every single thing that they have to do when they're out on the beach. <laughs> we've, we've got this mad situation where we have police officers who can arrest people spending all their time back at the office filling in forms and police community support officers who have a, a key role to play but can't arrest people are the ones who are left out patrolling on the street. And a lot of these people who are committing antisocial behaviour, and I, I agree with Kelvin, it, it, is a, it is a crime, and for the people who have to put up with it day in, day out, and often night in, night out, they get exhausted because they never get a break from some of these people. They, these people know exactly the difference between a police officer 
and a PCSO. And we do need tougher action taken against them. We need the police that we've got out on the streets. And actually, when we do get these people up before a judge, we need judges to be prepared to take strong sentences against them. And when they end up in custody, what we don't need is an early release scheme that means they're back out on the streets sooner than they ever should have been. I, I want to try and go to some people who haven't spoken. There are a lot of hands up. At the very back there, on the left, please. If you have spoken already, perhaps you could put your hand down, because I don't want to... Yes, you'll get our make. Yes. Um, I would like to say I live in a village with two community police officers who patrol. How realistic is it to expect them to do it? How many of us have walked past groups in the street and not taken them on because we don't regard it as our job or our responsibility or we feel that we're too frightened to do it? Have you done that? I have. I have also taken younger children on when they've misbehaved and it is unpleasant sometimes. They turn around, they swear at you. I still think it's worth doing because the more that young people know that their behaviour is unacceptable to the community rather than to the police, the sooner we'll get better behaved people. Monty Don. <laughs> Stronger penalties for well, neighbourhood bullies is the question. Yeah, right? I mean, I think, I think the really important thing you're mentioning is that it's not necessarily a police problem. I mean, it is a police problem, but it's a, it's a society problem. Is that I was listening to a story about this on the way up here, and a reporter pointed out that in Germany, this situation wouldn't arise because people would feel it was their problem. If it happened in their street, it was for their street to sort out. And I was being driven by an ex-policeman, and he said that when he was a policeman, a long time ago, you would take the child around to their parents, and they'd get a clip around the ear. Now the father or whoever it was would be arrested for giving him a clip around the ear. And the, the thing that... Are you a I, clip around the ear man yourself? No, of course not. I've been clipping anyone around the ear. But, but the thing that does horrify me is when I hear stories of what children are allowed to get away with in school. And if there's no discipline in school, and there's no discipline at home, there's going to be no discipline on the streets. And that doesn't mean punitive discipline, it just means behaving well, good manners, treating other people well. Mm -hmm. Can I well, antisocial behaviour takes many forms, but what, one thing is very clear. What can start off as a bit of a nuisance in some people's minds can escalate and make people's lives a living hell. And uh, I have dealt with that, as I'm sure other MPs on the table tonight have dealt with in their own constituency. It's not just a policing problem, but the report today has to demonstrate to the police that they need to take it more seriously in some quarters. They really do. And one of the important issues out of the report today was about how you collect the information. So when someone is a repeat victim, it doesn't get lost in the system. And we need to do that better. But it is also the case that other agencies have a role to play as well. And I spent last summer actually going out on patrol with the Safer Neighbourhood teams in my constituency. We took drink off kids. We took drink off an 18-year-old who is in the presence of under 18-year-olds because of powers that we provided. Uh, community support officers were working with the fully trained police officers. They were picking up some of the things to allow the police officers to spend more time would you like making tougher, the arrest. Would you like tougher penalties? And what we do need to make sure... Would you like tougher penalties? What we do need... Well, depending on the crime, the, cr the penalty has to fit. But for the ASBOs in the situations, we do need to make sure that the courts, when they're breached, take action. But it is important to remember that we do have more police actually... And this isn't to take away from anyone, not, certainly not any of my constituents who are facing antisocial behaviour. Actually, they're working better in terms of police, working with the local authority, working with community support officers to get on top of this. But it needs to be better and it needs to be focused on and they need to make sure that the parents too, using parenting orders and fines, also understand their responsibility right. too. A, a last point from the, from the lady there, yes. I work for the local authority and I work with the police and other agencies as a partnership group trying to resolve areas where we become aware of this issue and we work really hard with youth programmes and everything to, and once we're made aware of it we target those areas to try and resolve these issues and keep it under control. And would you like stronger penalties for the police to use, the police or the courts to use stronger penalties? Sometimes if the 
if we find they're not working, we try other uh, like youth uh, family intervention programs and situations okay. like that. Put every resource in we can. I know it sometimes isn't effective, but we do try. But right. it's working no, no. together that you're making the point about other people right. working together. Yes. Who know these families and know where they are and they know their history. We, yeah. must, we must move on. I want to take an